What's up? Joshua here, MVH Studio. Uh, this next video is kind of an archival one. It's from sometime last year. I may have put it out on my other YouTube channel, um, but this is a tighter edit with better sound. So if I did put it out, great. And if I didn't put it out, well, also great. Uh, it gets into what I look at as what is a bad design process look like or what does a mediocre design process look like uh, and i kind of use my early work as the frame for understanding it afterwards there's some additional commentary about the symptoms of a bad process so check this video out and then um stick through to the end and it gets a little bit more uh, universal. It's been a very long day, so I'm sorry if this introduction is not the uh, most energetic thing on the planet. All right, enjoy. I'm, uh, I'm in this big purge mode. I'm trying to like get rid of as much stuff as I possibly can. I just want to own like nothing. So I'm going through this bin of stuff from um, Intermedia Arts, my first real design gig out of school. You know, and I'm looking through it, and it's like funny because I got harp on this shit about how terrible I was. And I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad. And it's like that thing where like, formally, it's not so bad. One of the things I was lucky about was when my fucked up head actually worked, I made weird, neat shit. No one knew what it was about, but at least it didn't look like anything else in general when I was lucky. But the thing that I know in looking at them is like, you know, I'll look at this little flyer and I was like, oh, this is a cool little flyer. It's like entirely handmade but that one idea in that flyer was the only idea i had i didn't have options i didn't do more than one i just did this one version and then i had this asinine design process of like finding something photocopying it tracing it scanning that in like i used to hand make a lot of stuff and I did it because I was insecure. Kind of like perfectionism. I overworked it in order to convince myself that it was good. You know, my friend, Mike Perry, who I went to school with, he did everything by hand because he was just having a blast. He was having a ton of fun and the shit just flowed out of him. But for me, that wasn't the case. Like, um, I did it to compensate. And later, when I kind of stopped doing stuff by hand, I was a perfectionist because I was still trying to compensate. All of which is to say that um, it's possible to make good work without a really strong or rich process, but it's still kind of lacking. Like every piece in this bin I pulled out, that was the only idea I had. And sometimes it took me 10 days of like stress to get to those ideas. And I will say one other thing. By and large, I didn't sketch in those days. If I generated a concept, it was like literally like it popped in my head. It's like kind of the status quo way to get ideas. And it's really just luck. Like that's where like dumb shit like, oh, a, a shower or a long walk. Because the idea being that you will clear out your mind and magically a solution will pop into it. But what if that doesn't happen? That's what I was really dependent on. That's why I might take two days to come up with an idea because I didn't have a way of generating an idea or capturing an idea. And then eventually your luck runs out. You have the projects where no idea comes up, so then you have to fall back on a style. One of the things that I really struggled with and I didn't get was because developing a process had never been a priority in my education, at any level. I didn't really, like I knew how to make stuff that looked cool, but I didn't know how to like synthesize form in a meaningful way. So because I didn't know how to do that, I avoided doing kind of obvious mainstream things because I thought that shit would just look like a bunch of other stuff. So I would do my weird process, which would generate weird form. Like how do you work in a style but make an original contribution to it? I didn't know how to do that. How do you take a, a couple different styles? Or even like, how do you make an iconic idea? You know, an iconic idea is like kind of like the classic graphic design big idea. And that's the situation where people say it's gonna pop in your head. But in my opinion, that's where lists and systems actually make it. So these are all the kind of things I, I wrestled with. I didn't even know I was wrestling with them. 
I just was like a mediocre graphic designer. A couple things about the idea of a mediocre design process. The first one is that you can have a mediocre process and not make mediocre work, which is probably kind of a confusing idea. Like if you make bad work, you definitely have a bad process. But it's also possible that you can make good work, but the process that led to that work is mediocre. That's where I think I was. Like I don't really look back on my early work and think it's terrible, but I think the conditions that led to it are terrible. And I think there are some symptoms that help illuminate what those conditions were. So one is the fact that it took me a really long time to come up with ideas and I would only come up with the one idea. That's a risky proposition anyway, because if it takes you 10 days, like two business weeks, to come up with an idea and make an acceptable comp for it, what do you do when the client rejects it? There's no way that you get an additional two weeks to come up with another idea, even though it's very clear that you're gonna need it because um, you're not very efficient, not very good. And so when a client rejects stuff, it really can kind of toxify the relationship because you have a lot riding on them liking the thing that you made. And so if, you, if they don't like it, not only is the work that you did wasted, but you're really emotionally invested in it. And I think that in general, that's a really unhealthy place to be. There's no part of your life where you want everything to be riding on one person, one thing. You don't want any part of your life to be riding on one opportunity, one job, one person, one whatever. And I think in creative work, that's totally the same. And I think so much of the negative energy around the idea of the client comes from the fact that people are only have these couple of options to show them that they worked really really hard for and when that gets killed that's a very painful and irritating process so no wonder it's really negative but to me that's one of those byproducts that are another symptom I think of a mediocre process is whether you find design to be largely a stressful activity if every aspect of it is stressing you out, I would say that that means that the process sucks. That there's lots of reasons to be stressed in the world, no doubt, but moving some stuff around on a piece of paper or on a screen doesn't seem like it should be one of them. That seems like one of the things that should be fun all the time. And what we tend to do is we tend to spin it and blame the fact that it's stressful on the client or on the context or whatever. Those things feed into it. But when you have a good process, that makes a, a hard to deal with client a lot more manageable or a hard to deal with timeline a lot more manageable. And the third thing I would say is even though it seems like you're doing good work, do you feel like there's some sort of lack? For me, it was this idea of feeling like I hadn't yet arrived and I don't mean that in the way of like, like, I'm the shit, I've arrived, but in the sense of feeling like I knew what I was doing. There was a feeling in recent memory where that lack was gone. And no coincidence, it coincided with a thorough investigation of process, which then led to lots of other things unlocking themselves. Things about creative block, things about dealing with clients, things about timelines things about realizing when you can't actually come up with a concept and why you can't. Like all of a sudden, it's like the landscape opens up. You know, you can finally actually see the forest for the trees. But up for like for me up to maybe 2012, I never really felt like I knew what I was doing and like that I really had a firm grasp on it and to me that's a bad thing. I get that there are lots of people that think fumbling towards success or failing towards success is a great model uh, but for me it mostly just felt like failing <laughs> it's 
it's terrible, I'm so tired. Um, so those are a few examples of how I would diagnose whether you have a mediocre process or not, even if you're producing work that you think is good. But the question becomes, are you consistently hitting the level you want to, and are you running into these other headaches like clients rejecting stuff and then you're screwed or creative block or the endless cycle of revisions. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them. I'd love to hear from you. Take it easy.